So dear friends in Christ, today we celebrate a feast in honor of the Most Holy Trinity. Last Sunday, as we know, we celebrated the Feast of Pentecost, wherein we honor the third person of the Blessed Trinity, the Holy Ghost. And today offers us an opportunity to give praise to all of the persons of the Blessed Trinity. This feast can be said to be the crowning point of the liturgical season so far. And this feast is very important because it's the foundation, the Trinity is the foundation of our faith. But for today's sermon, I wanted to talk about a subject, a topic, that is very important but not all too popular. I already know that some of you will be saying that, or going to be thinking that I'm being too strict. There's others that probably will say that I'm not being strict enough. But we just prayed a prayer to the Holy Ghost, so let's make sure that our hearts are receptive to His grace. The topic at hand that we're going to speak about today is concerning modesty. And it's very important that we touch upon the subject because we are getting into that time of year where it gets warm and immodesty is very prevalent, very, very widespread. We live in a very pagan society, a very pagan world. And unfortunately, the spirit of the world, which is against the spirit of Christ, is everywhere. And it, Far too often it can be found even amongst otherwise some good traditional Catholics. But we know that Our Lady at Fatima lamented the fact that there will be many fashions that would be introduced that would greatly offend her Divine Son. But when we speak about modesty, what exactly is modesty? Modesty comes from the Latin word modus, which means limit. It's behavior, manner, or appearance intended to avoid impropriety or indecency. So it's one of the twelve fruits of the Holy Ghost, and it's part of the virtue of temperance. So for us to have a proper understanding of modesty, I believe it's critical for us to touch upon the words that are found in Holy Scripture, the words that St. Paul the Apostle wrote to the Corinthians. So these are his words. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For ye have been purchased at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. So when we speak about the importance of modesty, one might get the impression that the church sees the body as a bad thing. And this is definitely not the case. The church teaches that the human body is God's masterpiece in the visible world about us. And has been placed at the service of the soul. And it's been elevated to the rank of an instrument of the Holy Ghost. So these are words of Pope Pius XII. So when we speak about modesty, it's always connected with dignity, because there is a certain dignity and a certain respect that we need to have for our vessels, which God has given to each and every one of us. We know, we know that our, the church teaches that we have been created unto the image and likeness of God, that we are temples of the Holy Ghost. It is something that's very sacred and something holy and something that we should avail, because we see in in our, in our religion, in our faith, that when things are considered holy, the things are veiled. See, for example, the Saborium at Mass that's in the tabernacle, that's veiled. We see the tabernacle itself, that's veiled. In the Old Testament, we had the Holy of Holies that was veiled. And it's precisely because of this dignity as being images and made unto the image and likeness of God that we need to practice, that all of us have to practice the virtue of modesty because of that great dignity of being temples of the Holy Ghost. So when we remember this, it, keep, it makes modesty all the more, it makes more sense to us because we all have a responsibility to take proper care of our bodies as the vessels of God, proper nourishment, we have to proper hygiene, proper exercise, proper club covering. So when we speak about modesty, it's always connected with dignity. So keep that in mind, modesty and dignity. So when we look at for example, the elements of water and fire. Is fire or water bad? No. Fire is a good thing. It keeps us warm, helps us to cook our food, etc. What about water? Water is not bad. Water hydrates us. It keeps us alive. It helps our crops to grow. But an uncontrolled fire, uncontrolled water, without limits, destroys. And then so modesty sets limits on us, on what is good and so that it doesn't destroy. And like I said, we see in our society a great immorality, a great immodesty. You know, everywhere we go to the store, we go to the park, anywhere we look, there's just, just huge immodesty all around us. And you may be tempted 
And here we're talking about, we're going to touch upon especially modesty for ladies, but you may be tempted to look at society and say, well, everyone else is dressing this way, why can't I? And I want to make it clear that when I speak about modesty, I'm not saying that you girls, you especially young ladies, should dress like your grandmothers. It doesn't mean that mo being modest doesn't mean being unpopular. Being modest doesn't mean, especially for goodness sake, it doesn't mean being frumpy. Keep within the bounds of modesty. Dress, that dress tastefully. But remember to always look to our Blessed Mother as your model and your example, a married life standard. And I just wanted to give a f very few basic, simple rules of thumb by which we can, that we should remember when it comes to modesty of dress. And the first thing that I wanted to mention, the first guideline would be that we should never wear anything that is too low cut. So the norm is considered to be two fingers from the pit of the throat. So two fingers uh, worth of, of space from the pit of your throat. So that means obviously no cleavage, etc. So that is the first thing, not to wear anything that is too low cut. Second thing to remember is never to wear anything that is too tight or too form-fitting, especially when it comes to jeans or leggings. And this is a controversy in and of itself. Should women wear pants? Should women not wear pants? And all I will say is that virtue follows the middle course. That is a famous saying, virtue follows the middle course. I'm of the opinion, don't be too strict, don't be too lenient. We have to be balanced. If we are too strict, especially the parents, and you push the kids away, it fails in the long run. Because when the kids leave the house, as soon as they leave, they'll throw away anything that you've taught them. If you're too lenient, you're doomed to fail because the fallen human nature was never disciplined, it was never given those rules and those, those standards, and that's doomed to fail as well. And my mother told me, she mentioned to me that it's a balancing act, and it's only with the help of God and His Blessed Mother that anyone can attain and achieve a good balance when it comes to ch teaching, especially your children, modesty. But your parents especially need to be very vigilant and very aware over your children in this manner. Teach them, encourage them, um, and, and be vigilant. But I will say that there are situations where pants may be needed. I, I, won't, I won't deny that, especially doing work in the garden, maybe riding a horse, taking a hike, etc. These are understandable situations. But overall, I would, I would stress that the Mary like standard, the ideal, would be to wear skirts. But regardless of whatever be the case, whatever the controversy, etc., the important thing to remember is that whatever you wear, Make sure that it is not tight or form-fitting. So that is, a, like I said, the second thing that we need to remember not to low cut. Second would be not too tight or form-fitting. And obviously nothing that is of sheer material. And the third thing would be that it never be too short. So that is when it, it can be in regards to sleeves, but especially to the length of the dress or skirt or shorts or whatever it be. It should always reach below the knees, especially when sitting down. I read that Father Peel would actually turn women away from his confessional who were not wearing a skirt that, were, that was reaching at least eight inches past the knee. When you think about that, eight inches, that's an awful lot. And he, would, he wouldn't hear the confessions until he came, they came back with, with, a, with a skirt that reached, like I said, eight inches beyond the knee. But I would say the norm is that it reached past the knees, at least especially when sitting down. So those are the three simple guidelines that just keep in mind when it comes to modesty for your ladies. That do not be too low, cut, not too tight or form-fitting, and not too short. And one of the things that I wanted to say, that when we speak about the virtue of modesty, it also extends to men as well, not just to you ladies, but men have to practice modesty as well. That means wearing shirts in public, avoiding any tight pants, and especially these skinny jeans. These are just just ridiculous, and I would say no conscientious good Catholic could wear those skinny jeans. It's, they're too tight. And so that, that modesty pertains to men as well. And for you men, if you happen to see something immodest, turn away from the occasion of sin. Don't stare, don't gawk. Say a little prayer. Practice custody of the eyes. Look away. Just because everyone else is dressed in immodest, it doesn't give us an, a reason, doesn't give us an excuse to be falling into sins against purity and chastity by looking at others. So remember, you men especially, pray, say a little prayer, just turn away, don't pay attention, and 
practice that modesty, that custody, and it can be very hard, I understand, especially in the world that we live, but it is possible with God's grace. So remember, modesty, if we look at it in the right light, it's going to be something that's very, very good for us. Modesty. It's very, it's more attractive. I believe it's more attractive than dressing immodestly. When you see someone who's dressing very modest, it's something that inspires. It's something that up, uplifts people. And it's something that's attractive. So there's a good effect versus the bad effect that it can have on others. So you have the good effect of being uplifting, of being an encouragement. And the bad effect is that you can be an occasion of sin. And you can cause someone to commit a grievous sin that can send them to hell. So it's something very serious and not something to take lightly. So it, like I said at the beginning, it's not something that's going to make me very popular, but you need to, I need to stand for what's right, for, for God's teachings. And so I hope that some of you might think I'm too strict or too lenient, but virtue follows the middle course. So remember, you can bring about a lot of good by something as simple as what you wear and how you dress. So consider that, and especially you ladies, look to our Blessed Mother for your model. Your modesty is for all of us to practice. I recommend a good book for those of you mothers, for those of you young ladies. It's called Dressing with Dignity. It was written by um, a, a woman, a, a Catholic woman by the name of Colleen Hammond. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the book, but it's a very good book. And she explains how uh, dressing modestly does not mean being frumpy, doesn't mean um, being unpopular or not being fashionable, etc. But uh, having those standards by which we abide by. Um, so a very good book. And the bishop also printed out, we have printed out a pastoral letter that was written by the bishop in regards to the guidelines for the virtue of modesty. So those are available in the back uh, for you to have. And it's good for us to review these things, especially as we go through these summer months. And as our Blessed Mother lamented the fact that so many souls go to hell for sins of the flesh, and that so many fashions would be introduced that would be offensive uh, to her Divine Son. So something we need to talk about is something that not a very pleasant subject, but remember those three sim those simple guidelines for you ladies, to not too low cut, not too short, not too tight or form-fitting. And for you men, remember having that virtue of modesty as well. And so let us definitely look to God for and the Church, the teachings of the Church for direction and guidance. And remember, this is one of the twelve fruits of the Holy Ghost as we finish the Feast of Pentecost. We were praying for the seven gifts, but we should also have been praying for the twelve fruits of the Holy Ghost, and modesty is one of these twelve fruits. So let, let us be receptive to the grace of God, to the grace and the calling of the Holy Spirit. Remember, let us practice the virtue of modesty and be a good testament to our holy Catholic faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.